the wedge shown can slide without friction or horizontal floor. Mass of the wedge is m, and its angle of inclination theta equal to 30 degree. A block of mass m slide down the wedge without friction when released. The wedge and the block are free to move. I think once I discuss this idea, if you can recollect. Now, what is that dotted line? What is that dotted line? The diagram is very important. You have to put effort in understanding first the diagram. You can solve this by very lengthy method. You can solve this by <coughs> an easy method. Yeah, okay, no. This will be theta. This will be phi. This is the block. And I'll, I'll write M1, M2, so that it'll be easy for me. Now I'm just changing the symbols for our convenience. Small m is M1, capital M is M2. Uh, where, where is the uh, now? What is the state of wedge? Wedge will also move. What is asking? Find the ratio of mass of the block to that of the wedge. Is asking the ratio of m1 by m2. He has given theta and phi also. Okay. Now uh, you do one thing. Take help of two frames. Get into the part. Like a, let there be a person and let there be a person. So there's a person Q, there's a person P. What person P will comment? Person P, I think, can you remember? I, I told you, no, like a, whenever a block is moving on inclined plane, in which frame the problem is very difficult to solve. Where the block and wedge both are moving in which frame, doing problem will be very difficult in the ground frame, no? Because ground. in the ground frame, we don't have perfect idea regarding <coughs> in what direction the block moves. But in this question, what he has given information, in what direction the block will have acceleration, he has given that red color line. So what is that red color line? Path of the block M1 with respect to ground. I'll, I'll indicate that here. What is this red color line? Path of M1 with respect to ground. If the path of block related to ground an angle phi. So th that's what I indicating here. So person P what he comments, the, the block, the wedge will move horizontally. In what direction the wedge should move? According to this, it should move towards, you no? Know? A uh, person P what will come in. The wedge will move towards right and the block M1 will move along the red color path. So therefore, in what direction I should show the acceleration of block M1, somewhere like this. I think there's the only problem you have come across situation of like this. Remaining all problems, we never know the acceleration of block with respect to ground, the direction. But here, the direction is given. <coughs> but we don't know A1, A2, that much we, are, we, are, we don't know anything. Just he has given the path. The wedge will move horizontally, the block will move along the red color path, red color dotted line. Okay, now he's asking the ratio of M1, M2. <coughs> so <coughs> we'll go for the forces. So here N1, normal contact. This be N1, no? Now what makes the wedge to move along Y axis, along X axis, the normal reaction only? Okay, this, this is theta, this is 60. So what can be this angle? 120. So what with this angle? Anybody angle this? Shall I'll, I'll call alpha. Anybody value? 30 degrees. 30 degrees, sir. Okay, this is a 30 degrees. 
Uh, do we know what are the forces acting on the block along the incline? M and G sine theta. Here, M and G cos theta. So, what is the acceleration of the block along the incline? That's what I'm why why pseudo force? I'll do in the ground frame. I, I'll I'll take a I'm a person P. So person P, what's happen? You'll write it. Huh? Let, let me write uh, with respect to person P. So no pseudo force, no. In the ground frame, if I do it, then M and G sine theta along incline. M and G sine theta should be equal to M one. A1 cos alpha and get cancelled. So G sin theta is how much? 30. So 1 by 2. A1 cos alpha cos 30 root 3 by 2. So A1 equal to G root 3. Oh, okay, we got acceleration of the block. This is equation 1, you keep it. <coughs> No, let's come for the perpendicular to incline along the incline. This is perpendicular to incline. What are the forces? M and G cos theta minus N1 equal to M1 A1 sin alpha. So we don't know M1 G we know. This will be cos theta root 3 by 2 minus n1 m1 a1 is g by root root g by root 3 sin alpha sin 30 this will be 1 by 2. Solving this I'll end up with n1 is equal to m1 g by root 3. Because uh, there's n1 let me keep here. Now, now what makes the wedge to move n1 sin theta? Is that okay? This force. Okay, if I resolve the force, so how much I'll get here on in, in this direction? N one sine theta. What is N one sine theta should be equal to? M2, A2. Do we know N1 value? S, M1, G by root 3. What is sine theta? 1 by 2 equal to M2, A2. So here finally M1 by M2 is equal to two root 3 by A2 by G. Yes, and now this is the equation three, you write it. Sir, uh, what's the final answer, sir? Final answer, just I'll, I'll, I'll give it my limit. M1 by M2 should be two. Okay, sir. Okay, we don't know A2, no? How to bring A2? Wedge constraint, sir. Yeah, we have to apply the wedge constraint. So, what's happening to the block? Block is what happened, will not lose contact from the wedge, no? I'm bringing the next idea the block will not lose contact. From the wedge as it slides. Uh, no. So, what constraint equation can you bring? Acceleration along common normal must be equal. Acceleration perpendicular to incline of them must be equal. Any reason for that? This n1 is non zero. This is the reason. 
Uh, what shall I write now? So any constraint equation. A1 sine alpha should be equal to the constraint equation. So acceleration of the block is how much? Like, like this. I, I, okay, there's a A2, no? So here you, you have to take this as theta. So I'll write, uh, write down the equation here. A1 sine alpha. Uh, A1 sin alpha should be equal to A2 sin theta. Is that okay? From where this equation brought, what is the acceleration of the block? A1 like this, no? So perpendicular to incline, A1, A1 sin alpha. Somebody please, please mute it, no? This is A1. So how much perpendicular to incline? A1 sin alpha. Okay, the acceleration of the wedge A2. Perpendicular to incline, how much it should be? So th this will be theta, no? If you resolve it. So what can be this angle? Theta. Theta. So what is, what is the perpendicular thing? So th this should be the A2 sin theta. Okay, got this. I think now, now, now what will happen? Uh, we, we, do we know A1? Yes, we know A1. Substituting that. A1 is how much? G by root 3. Sin alpha. Alpha is 30 degree. So 1 by 2. A2. This will be 1 by 2. So what is A2 equal to? G by root 3. So the equation for substituting 4 in 3 will get the required answer. M1 by M2 should be equal to 2. So a nice problem, very good problem. <laughs> okay, just make observation, I'll, I'll scroll up. Huh? I'll go to next problem. So that wedge constraints is very important. Huh? Some wedge constraints are not something, anything that one. Acceleration along, if the two surfaces are in contact, acceleration along common normal must be equal. I think this particular statement is missing in book. You might have noticed till now. But every question, they brought answer. But that statement is missing. That's why what happens, students will start thinking that every question, what happens, some different ideas are no. The method is same. Wherever you see two surfaces in contact, you can bring this idea. Yeah, one more. All this today, what all I discussed, no, all they are from Pathfinder. Huh? 